What's up guys, Maddie here. In today's video, we're gonna be checking out a new plugin from Studio DMI, Acoustica, and Josh Goodwin called the Magic Flow. From what I read, this plugin started off as a vocal EQ channel strip type thing and morphed into something more that you can use on just about anything in your mix, even including the mix bus, which they say has been modeled from Josh's analog chain that he uses every day in his mixes. So in today's video, we'll check out how this plugin works and take a listen to it on vocals, bass, guitar, and the master bus. Let's go. All right, guys, so here is Magic Flow, and I have Curve EQ pulled up, which is just, you know, shows us what uh, frequencies are being affected when uh, processing through the plugin, just so we can have a visual re representation of what's going on. Uh, and so, as you can see, there's nothing on. The, the, the plugin's just on with no processing turned on. These lights indicate processing turned on. And there's already a bit of a, a sound to it um, with, you know, the mid kind of scooped out here. Uh, if we bypass it, obviously it goes flat and then you bring it on. And so even with nothing, uh, the mid scooped out. So then you have a uh, preamp, which changes things a little bit. That's the input preamp. And then there's an output preamp, which doesn't look like it changes things as much as maybe just the gain changes. I don't really see the, maybe the, the high ends changing a bit, but they have these inputs and outputs and it's kind of cool. They have a... I can't switch it, but they have, <laughs> I can't get to the thing without it moving. They have input level and then a suggested level, as you see. So as we turn this input up level up, the suggest you're now matching the suggested level of the plugin. And this is kind of cool because the way this is all set up, um, it kind of creates the gain stage for you and makes it easier to, you know, push into the plugin the way it was intended to be pushed into. And then the same as goes for the output. This has a suggested output. And it slightly changes depending on... Um, the preset or what you're using. So that's kind of cool uh, to have that. Then you have, uh, starts up here with two filters. And so you have your, your normal low cut and you can see it's like a six dB slope, just kind of slowly goes down there, pull it back. The high cut's a little different though. It does what a normal high cut would do, but after you get to about this line here, you'll start seeing a big push up in the 1K range. And I think this kind of creates, you know, we'll listen to this in a minute on the vocals, but it will kind of create like a lo-fi type sound, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's the filters there. Then you have this peak level and you can see that changes things a bit too, right? Um, this is kind of like a compressor and, and it works really well once we hear it. Um, the cool part down here is dynamic resonance controller. And so what that does is it's kind of like, um, a, a, like four DSers, if you would, together and you can... Pick the frequency you want. This will all make more sense when I when we actually uh, listen to it on vocals. But as you can see, when you collect select it, it solos the band, so you can kind of dial into what it is you're trying to um, take out. This is you know mostly made to take out frequencies that you don't like. That's what this whole little section's for. And then once you find the band you don't want, you pull this down to, to compress it. You have that one and then four more, and you'll see there's a gain reduction here once it starts compressing. Uh, next is this dynamic EQ section. We'll get into this once we pull the vocal up, but there's four different kinds of settings it has. Um, from what I can tell, D like doesn't really um, compress the bass much, um, and then C and B uh, compress it quite a bit more, and A is kind of like the middle ground, um, and then, you know, there's other bands all the way through. It's 20 kilohertz to 20 hertz, so it's a dynamic uh, EQ compressor uh, for certain bands depending on which mode you pick, okay? Then you have this dynamic balance, uh, which is just like another kind of compressor. It pulls things down, and then lastly is this four stage EQ. So what it is, is the EQ and it has four different settings and you can see them up here. As I click them, they go to different ones. And as you turn it up, it kind of turns up the scale of the EQ. So you have that one, three, two, and one. So I, these are, you know, set for different things. You could use some, maybe a, a three would be more for like a drum or a bass or something where, you know, this might be for bass, guitar, or vocal, uh, this looks like it's actually really good for a vocal and one might be for who knows what. So you could try these different styles on whatever instrument you're EQing or, you know, processing and see which one works best. So that's the layout for the most part. You also have a quality, which is normal, good, and superb. They say to use good if you can, um, if it's insert and then a uh, dry wet mode, which is cool. And then uh, quite a few presets. They have, Josh has three 
which these master ones actually sound pretty good. We'll, we'll check them out. And then there's a bunch of factory presets um, that are just on a bunch of different kinds of things you can try out. So enough yip yap and, 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 and graphs. Let's get into listening to some examples. All right, so the first example we're going to do is a uh, vocal, and it's by my buddy Trip Carter. Make sure to check him out on Spotify and Apple Music and all that. And I'm just going to go through and kind of EQ this vocal up and make it sound better using this. Um, it's a good vocal because it has some S's and some stuff we can use the dynamic resonance controller with. Uh, but let me just play it bypassed, and then we'll start tweaking away. I'm still in my own way, it's true. Sometimes I feel I'm ready to go, no problem. I feel like I'm built different than you, and yeah, I still can't always weather the storms. I'm so it's got some S's and stuff that it jumps out here and there on certain parts where we can compress, um, maybe bring out a little, take out some of the low end so it sticks out a little bit more, and maybe brighten it up overall. So let's just, you know, run through it and see what we come up with. I'm still in my own way, it's true. Sometimes I feel I'm ready to go, no problem. I feel like I'm built different than you, and yeah, I still can't always weather the storms. I'm still in my own way, it's true. Sometimes I feel I'm ready to go, no problem. I feel like I'm built different than you, and yeah, I still can't always weather the storms. I'm still in my own way, it's true. Sometimes I feel I'm ready to go, no problem. I feel like I'm built different than you, and yeah, I still can't always weather the storms. I'm still in my own way, it's true. Sometimes I feel I'm ready to go, no problem. I feel like I'm built different than you, and yeah, I still can't always weather the storms. Sometimes I feel I'm ready to go, no problem. I feel like I'm built different than you, and yeah. Still, it's where the storms. My own way is true. Sometimes I feel I'm ready to go, no problem. I feel like I'm built different than you, and yeah. I still can't always weather the storms. I'm still in my own way, it's true. Sometimes I feel I'm ready to go, no problem. I feel like I'm built different than you, and yeah, I still can't always weather the storms. I'm still in my own way, it's true. All right, so that sounds pretty good. I feel like we got some of the S's out, but then brightened back up with the uh, equalizer at the end, tamed some of the, uh, the parts where he's jumping out a bit uh, with the uh, different compression modes. So let's just turn it on and off and see if we got it better or not. I'm still in my own way, it's true. Sometimes I feel I'm ready to go, no problem. I feel like I'm built different than you, and yeah, I still can't always weather the storms. I'm still in my own way, it's true. Sometimes I feel I'm ready to go, no problem. I feel like I'm built different than you, and yeah. I still can't always weather the storms. So that's pretty close. It sounds a lot better. It definitely does what, it, uh, you know, we wanted it to do. I was able to, it got a little too bright for me. That's why I tweaked this one and, and added a bit more than I needed to bring it back. It was too much. But it was definitely, you know, it, it took us a, a really short period of time to make this vocal sound good. So I dig it for vocals for sure. Let's check it out on bass. Okay, so we got this bass guitar here. And well, let's try the presets just to see if that gets us going. Um, we'll switch through to the, let's see, four different bass presets and see which one we like to start with. First, let me just play you the bass so you guys can hear it. Okay. As you guys can see there, I, I just went and, you know, switch the settings, the input and output to what's suggested. Cause I think that's going to help make us hear how this thing's hitting the, the channel strip correctly. So that's not bad. It makes it sound a little clear. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let's try the next one. I kind of dig what that one's doing. So let's just kind of dial through this. So it looks like they're taking some of the, the high cut out. Um, got a high, pretty steep high cut on there. Uh, no peak leveling. The dynamics control EQ is in, but barely on. The dynamic balance, and then there's quite a bit of uh, resonance control going. Let's go through and just hear what that's doing. So getting rid of some of the, the farty sound there. Some of the ow, wow, wow. And then the EQ setting they're using here is number three, which gives you a little bit of a boost around 55 Hertz. And then another little boost at 1K and then a ramp up and which probably doesn't matter much on this bass, uh, but a good little, you know, EQ for that. But definitely rounds it off. Let's bring a little peak leveling in the dynamic EQ up and see what that does. What's interesting too is this is on D, which we remember we talked about earlier, doesn't really affect the low, low end too much. So that makes sense that this is probably the setting used for bassy or instruments uh, quite a bit. See, because when we switched to C, see how the, 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 the low end just went crazy, the compression on that? But yeah, pretty cool. It definitely improved the bass sound, made it fuller, a little more in our face, and uh, being able to take some of the resonance out was nice too. Let's check it out on the guitars. All right, so we got this guitar here. I'll save us a little time, and <clears throat> I went through some of the presets, and I just didn't like what it was doing. So when you hear this guitar, there's there's some little like uh, high brightness that I don't like too much, and I think we could get rid of that pretty easily with the plug -in. So I'm just going to go in and do a few tweaks and see if we can improve this guitar sound. So that's a little bit better. We got rid of some of the, the twanginess of the guitar. I don't think it needs that EQ at the end. It just kind of brings the twanginess back. But it was a pretty quick way to, you know, have a bunch of tools to be able to EQ that guitar out and clean it up a bit. All right, so lastly, guys, let's just check this out on the Master Bus to see what it can do. We're just going to use one of Joss's presets and see how it sounds. This is a super rough mix, so it's nothing that's been mixed at all. But, you know, we'll get the idea of what it could do. So let's use master one and then we'll switch to master two and see what that does. You notice too, the quality changes. You want superb is four times over sampling where uh, good is two times normal is 
no times. Uh, I think your best bet is to try to stay on good as much as you can with this. And then for mastering, switch it to superb. So let's take a listen. So sometimes. Let's first, while, while I'm playing it, I'm gonna get our input and output uh, suggestions correct too. So sometimes I put my weight all on you. I can't bear it by myself. I put my weight all on you. And you hold it for me. You know it's shorty. I put my weight all on you. So sometimes I put my weight all on you. I can't bear it by myself. I put my weight all on you. And you hold it for me. So it does add some clarity to it, a little tightness to the mix. It's nice. I think I feel like it killed too much of the low end, but let's try Master 2 and see if that changes things. So sometimes I put my weight all on you. I can't bear it by myself. I put my weight all on you. And you hold it for me. You know it's shorty. I put my weight all on you. So sometimes I put my weight all on you. I can't bear it by myself. I put my weight all on you. And you hold it for me. You know. So I like that one a bit better. It just added, kept it like a little more linear, but helped clean it up and, and bring it out. I'm sure if you tweaked it and got it right, this could be a really great uh, mix bus processor for your mixes. So that's a quick look at Magic Flow by Josh Goodwin, Studio DMI and Acoustica Audio. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I think it's a great plugin. Um, I'm gonna be using it probably on vocals. I could see that being kind of the go-to for me uh, and then maybe with things that have problems like that guitar or, you know, you just want to make something better the bass. Uh, a bunch of different great utilities to use this for. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you need your songs mixed or mastered, hit me up at mixedandmastermysong.com. Talk to you soon.